Hi, let us look at part 3 of this video series. We are covering the real exam questions for Certified Developer Associate. This certification is very important if you are trying to make a career in the cloud area. Please subscribe to my channel and like my videos. For questions 1 to 15, please refer parts 1 and 2 of this video series. Let's jump into this question. See the problem statement here is, the problem here is EC2, there is an EC2 instance and using Boto scripts, they are trying to start and shut this EC2 instance. And they get this error. What is this error? This error is talking about request limit exceeded. So the answer here is option B. Why? See, whenever you get request limit exceeded, that means uh, the number of requests made is high. So we are getting this error and the reason for this error is network glitches. So in order to avoid this error, what you have to do is you have to put the request after certain period of times. For example, if you, you were making an API call every say uh, 10 milliseconds, so wait. Wait and make a call after 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. Why? Because in this time period, maybe the network glitch is resolved. Okay. So hence this process is called exponential back off. This is the term. Okay. For optimizing the number of API requests made to EC2 instance. Now, if we see the first option here, the first option is talking about make uh, assigning an IAM role to this EC2 instance. This will not work because the problem is not with security. So A is wrong. C is talking about increasing the network bandwidth. We do not know for sure it's a bandwidth issue. It may be some network glitch or some momentary things which happen in that millisecond. We don't know. Hence C is wrong. D. It just tells you to upgrade to the latest AWS CLI version. It will not resolve this problem. The problem is not happening because of the CLI version. And the problem is not happening because Boto is not able to handle high request rates. The request rates are there, but sometimes the network has some glitches. So we will lock answer B and move forward. Question number 17. See, in a typical environment, you have, in a typical project, for example, you have three environments, dev, test, and production. And whenever you cascade your code from dev to test, test to production, there has to be a review process intact so that you do not cascade junk code to prod and screw up prod. So basically, you want to introduce a human review what is the most effective method to do this in a code pipeline? See, conceptually, if you think of about a pipeline, you, you see this arrow here. This arrow is a pipeline. Okay. It is made up of stages and stages also have actions in it. So if you want a human review to happen, a human review to happen, introduce an approval action in a stage. This is what you need to do. Just introduce an approval action so that it will wait for a human intervention, a human review and approval. Option A is wrong because it is talking about using multiple pipelines. See, the problem is not that I should I should create some multiple pipelines. I have one pipeline. And this itself is enough. I do not need to introduce a new pipeline because I should use an action instead of creating a pipeline. Hence, A is wrong. C is talking about disabling the stage transition to allow manual approval. You do disabling of the stage transition only if you want to avoid moving from one stage to another for example this this is stage one this is stage two if you do not want it to cascade from stage one to stage two you can disable this okay you can disable this but why would you want to do that to introduce a human approval you still want stages to happen you want to introduce an additional action that's all 
and here again option D they are talking about disabling a stage prior to the deployment stage disabling a stage will not work because you are actually cutting down on the functionality hence C and D are wrong and B is correct let's look at the next question see you basically have so many audio and video data you want to store these in your s3 bucket okay and whenever you are writing the data or storing the video and audio files it has to be encrypted it should not be stored as it is it has to be encrypted you see this it has to be encrypted so how can you ensure this options a b c and d let's scan through each one of these a it talks about using a lambda to send notifications okay this is crap okay if an unencrypted file comes and every time you get notifications what if thousand unencrypted file comes and there are thousand emails shared so if you get like thousand emails will the security team have the bandwidth to check these thousand emails no so this option is crap option a is crap option b it talks about configuring an amazon s3 bucket policy to prevent the upload of objects that do not contain this is exactly what we want whenever your files are encrypted when these files are using server side encryption then it will have this header associated with the file so you can configure the bucket policy this here you can configure the policy here such that if you don't if the file is coming from here to here and you don't see that header reject it you will not send to the security team because they will not have that bandwidth you have to automate and remove i mean you know governance this is a part of governance and the governance should be automated so b looks great option option c is talking about you create an amazon cloud watch event rule to verify all objects are encrypted or not that means that the objects will come from here to here to here it will come it will sit and it will wait for your cloud watch to activate so suppose there are thousand objects they they will come and sit here okay and then it will wait for mr cloud watch to come and scan and see which ones are not encrypted and then it will take an action but see by that time your system already allowed so it's like you have a security gate and you want to scan people who are carrying knives guns and bombs and what you do is you allow all of them to come and sit in your premises and then the security team will come by that time these guys can run havoc they can use knives guns across the building and create havoc so that is not an option so c is wrong d is talking about you configure a bucket policy to prevent upload of objects that contain see you have you don't the difference between b and d is that you you are d is trying to avoid or prevent files containing this header this is not right the encrypted files will have that header and you have to allow that's why d is totally wrong b is the right answer let's move forward see the story is you have production applications using aws lambda okay and you are having now performance issues you want to scan and see what is the root cause what is the root cause okay you have these all options now what to select the first one says you need to add logging statements to lambda functions and then use cloudwatch see if you have x-ray okay that is born to do this why will you try to reinvent the wheel so all other options are wrong except for option c this is the answer because x-ray is designed specifically for this purpose 
So if you see this documentation, it clearly says we use this X-ray for performance issues. We understand the root cause of the performance issues and errors, and it is used for production style distributed applications, primarily those which are based on microservices architecture. See here the option D inspector inspector is is a security device or a security service it is not used to resolve your performance issues so D is wrong even if you see option B cloud trail we use cloud trail to examine the logs it is the primary purpose is to understand what went wrong were there any abnormal access abnormal hacks with the application but this will not help you primarily with performance issues performance issues will only be helpful through x-rays that is meant and born for that purpose so we will lock this answer option c and move forward to the last question of this part okay let's look at this question which is the last question of this part this is based on kinesis data streams so you have kinesis stream and lambda is trying to process the data coming in the stream and it it is slow so we see here uh, the the pain point says it is slow and what you have to do is what else the developer finds is that the functions iterator age matrix is growing and lambda runtime is consistently more than expected okay so let's quickly check the documentation what happens what is iterator age the iterator age you see this increases when the function cannot efficiently process the data so like we told something is messed up and which activity should the developer do to boost the performance of the processor so shards shards are like suppose you have a restaurant and you are getting orders you got five orders you have five chefs working on those five orders and suddenly what happens there is a spike you suddenly get 20 more orders 20 more customers you do not have those chefs so that is how that labor that number of chefs is actually shards in this case and what our option suggests is option a it suggests increase the number of shards yes this will work because you are increasing the number of chefs in our example if you increase the number of chefs you can process all orders from all the customers so a is correct but you see we need to select two options two options so let's look at option b decrease the timeout of the lambda function now typically a lambda function usually runs for 15 minutes if you decrease the time out instead of 15 you make it say 10 or 8 see as it is your lambda function is slow and you are going to decrease it further so it will never complete you need to solve the slowness problem you cannot reduce the execution time and say now it can run fast no it will not happen b is wrong let's look at c increase the memory that is allocated to uh, to lambda function yes this see lambda is already running if you give it more resources more memory more label like in our restaurant example if we uh, scale up the number of chefs to match the customer counts then it is perfect same way here in option a we scale up the shards okay and option c we will scale up the memory that lambda is using so there are two components here okay there is one component called kinesis stream and the other component is called lambda so if you have to do tweaking at two places we have to do it at stream level and you have to do it at lambda level and hence we say c looks correct let's look at option D decrease the number of shards so for example your customer count increases you are saying decrease the number of chefs it it is detrimental to your business similarly here if you decrease the number of shards shards here it will not work it will not work you are actually causing a bottleneck hence D is totally wrong and let's look at e increase the timeout of lambda function timeout is restricted to 15 minutes you cannot move it beyond you cannot make it 20 you cannot make it 25 minutes 15 minutes is the max cap so this will not help you because the tool or the lambda the way it is been created it will not allow you to do that so these are our two answers so this brings us to the end of part three stay tuned for more such parts and please subscribe to this channel it motivates me to put in some more such content which will help you with certifications see you in the next part